Georgia Public Television presents the 2001 Georgia High School Association Boys State Basketball Championships. Major funding for this broadcast is made possible in part by Georgia Natural Gas, IBEW Local 613, Georgia Touchstone Energy Cooperatives, and by South Trust Bank. Live from the Centerplex in Macon, it's the GHSA Single A Boys Basketball Title Game between the Buford Wolves and the Taylor County Vikings. And hello, everybody, and welcome to Championship Weekend here on GPTV. I'm Jim Giannacchio. Joining me for the first of 10 games over the next two days, my colleague Phil Hanson. Phil, welcome once again. Jim, it's great to be back here with you and everyone here at GPTV. What a season it's been. Let's begin with Buford. Winners of four of their first 14 games. Now they're just two games over 500. But hey, throw the record book out. This is for the state title. You always want to be playing your best basketball down the stretch, and these guys have. The one-point win over Warren County, you always want to survive and advance in tournament action. Now they're one game away from the state title. It's great, and they've had some great players over the year with some key performances. Isaac Brown is definitely one of them. Isaac Brown, he is a super, super player. Every team has a go-to guy, and you're looking at him. And we mustn't forget also Zach Crawford, a big year for Buford. Zach Crawford, he's the young man that's going to do the stuff that nobody wants to do. He's going to rebound, play great defense, make that extra outlet pass, dive on the floor for a loose ball. He is the emotional leader of this team. And, of course, uh, Zach uh, averaging uh, almost 11 points a game. Now, Taylor County, on the other hand, the old running gun. These guys can shoot from downtown, and, boy, they have some serious speed. I tell you what, uh, look at those margins of victories, and that's due to one word. They are relentless. Their pressure creates double-digit victories down the board. And, of course, they've had some key players along the way, and one of them, of course, is the hot shooting guard, Akeem Hartman. Offensively and defensively, he's the guy that starts them in their tempo. He'll hit a big three. They're able to jump into that press, and they come at you like a pack of wild dogs. And, of course, Edward McCrary has also had a fantastic year. Lord Almighty, this guy has electric hops. He can jump out of the gym. He is explosive, gets a big dunk, steal, dives on the floor, jumps into the third row to get a ball. I love this kid. Uh, both coaches coming in uh, have been, uh, done a great job. Uh, of course, Gerald Arnold with uh, Buford and Taylor County with uh, Anzi Hardman. Those two guys have done just do an outstanding job. A true test of any coach is how well his team performs in pressure situations. And we have two outstanding coaches today. Both teams play at an excellent level. They play hard, and they have great mental discipline. We're getting ready for the starting lineups. This uh, Coliseum has filled up quickly as uh, the championships have uh, come to uh, Macon. And uh, it's amazing, all the buses outside from all the schools, all the support, you know, the, the cheerleaders and the, and the moms and the dads and the friends, it's just amazing. I wish everyone could experience March Madness because there's just nothing like it. It is very, very special. Of course, uh, Phil, we've got other games uh, coming up later today on GPTV. Uh, what a lineup coming up. But we've got, of course, the single-A game is uh, Buford and Taylor County. Uh, after this one at 1.30 is uh, Calhoun at East Hall as you can see on the screen there. And then the AAA game is Westover taking on Mitchell Baker. Well, Mitchell Baker has turned this thing into the Mitchell Baker Invitational. They're here every year. And then later on tonight, it's the Quad A finale, uh, Doherty taking on Mays, and the 5A, the first ever 5A state championship, Savannah and Brickmark. If you're a basketball junkie, you're in heaven today. I was amazed. I saw how Savannah uh, beat Marietta, and what a surprise that was. Well, I tell you what, I, my hat goes off to Marietta. Those kids played so hard. Alan Kivers had a great last half of the season, and th those kids played hard, and Savannah just did a super job. All right, here's your starting lineups. Uh, being announced to the crowd here at the Coliseum. Here's your Buford starting lineup. Boy, they got some key players there, Phil. You're going to look at Buford. They are a guard perimeter, perimeter based team. You got both Browns and Bagley are going to secure the perimeter for Coach Arnold. PK Sam will handle the scoring inside, and Zach Crawford will bang the boards all day long. All right, boy, I'll tell you, they're getting into it here. Getting a little loud. <laughs> Buford has traveled well. There's a lot of green in this audience. 
you, both crowds, I can't tell who's louder. I would have to say Buford's got a little bit more numbers. Here comes P.K. Sam. Going to Florida State as a receiver, but today his goal is winning the state title for Coach Arnold and Buford. Again, this guy is going to do all the things you don't, that other players don't like to do. If there's a loose ball, he's coming to get it. Rico Brown. Big, big time stop and pop. They've got to locate him, that beating Taylor County, on the defensive transition. And of course, there's three cousins on the Brown family here. You got Theo, who's a sub. But Isaac Brown is a big time scorer. Will have the ball in his hand 75% of the time. And of course, there's the head coach for Buford, Coach Arnold. Coach Arnold's a good friend of mine. I've worked a lot of basketball camps with him. He is an excellent, excellent guy. And so there's your introductions for Buford. And here comes Taylor County. There, there's Mr. Hardman. This guy is responsible for 80% of their offense. And there we got the high wire act, and this kid can really jump. If you like jumping, you're going to enjoy watching him play. Now this big guy, McLean, can really get on the boards. He's got long arms, looks skinny, but he's wiry strong. Now the guard tandem of Terrell and Lucas, there's Terrell right there, Rock steady, quarterback on the floor, and Lucas is going to run the show and set their defensive tempo on the perimeter. And there's your Vikings, and of course, Coach, Coach Hardman, 122 wins and just 40 losses. But Coach Hardman just does a super, super job with his team. They're very well disciplined, they execute very well, and they're always prepared. Coming up, Taylor County and Buford will have the opening tip for you after these messages and a word from GPTV. Funding for a broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. You're watching member-supported GPTV, your PBS station, bringing you the best. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. Welcome back to the single-A state championship, the Macon Centerplex here at Macon. Let's go courtside and John Nelson. Hello, John. Thanks, G. Let's talk a little anatomy. You remember when you were in high school, a little physiology and biology, too. Remember the pH factor where they talked about acids and bases? Buford's got the PK factor. PK Sam and six other high school players from the football team are on the basketball team. And PK said he originally didn't want to play basketball. Three weeks later, he changed his mind. He's out on the floor today, and that's why they're no longer 4-10 and, and one game away from a state championship, guys. All right, thanks, John. I like the way you use all of those uh, subjects of history and science. Yeah. And, and he also found a quick way to make himself seven foot one in that shot. There you go. Well. I love that low can angle shot with the camera. Jim, all the right. keys in today's ball game handling Taylor County's relentless pressure, half court offensive execution, defensive transition. You're going to have to locate the shooters down the floor in rebounds. If you want that championship ring, you've got to control the battle of the boards. PK Sam to jump up against Edward McCrary. Here is your opening tip of the single A championship from making him underway. Here we go. And Buford takes control early. They like to move the ball around, Phil. The great scissor cut action. You're going to see a lot of cutters going through the lane and coming out the backside. And Buford will keep it on offense. Just underway from Macon, the single-A championship. There's a screen Buford for the screener. Taylor County. Well, that's a backcourt violation. See, there's the pressure. Now, one says that's just a turnover. But the pressure by Taylor County of pushing Buford away from the basket caused that. And Taylor County will take over. No score in the early going. Vikings first possession. They're going to look inside to the high wire, wire act. Going to McCrary early, trying to get him started. And Akeem Hardman will inbound the ball for the Vikings. Hardman gets it out to Terrell. Rick Terrell back out Hardman. Hardman likes to shoot from outside, and he dials it up from three-point land. That's a great pass by McCrary. Even though that didn't go in, that was an excellent inside-outside action. Buford on the run. I saw somebody uh, that was the, the backboard there. That's McLean. They all can jump. And Buford sets it up. Bagley calling the play. Looks left side. And the jumper is off the mark by Rico Brown. 
Great defense by the Vikings. There'll be no easy shots today. This is Lucas. Drives, feeds outside, and the Vikings work it back outside. Both teams do a great job of catching, pivoting, dribbling, passing, shooting without traveling. They often catch and pivot and go. Akeem Hardman. There's a little isolation for the big fella. And they dish it back out. These guys, they're looking for three-pointers. Here's Hardman again from three. Off the mark. And the rebound by P.K. Sam, who can get up there. Buford on the run. This is Crawford. Can't get it up. And a loose ball. And we're going to have a jump ball. And the possession now goes towards Buford. There's our guy on the floor. A loose ball. Crawford's going to be on there getting it. So far, good defense by both clubs. Very much so. And it's basically HUD handling pretty close to script here. Both perimeters are dominating the game. They're both handling the ball well. This is Lucas. Buford County's gone to a triangle and two. They got three guys playing a zone and two playing man-to-man. -man. Lucas and Terrell are the quarterbacks handling it up near the top of the key. They got a man on Hardman. Now they switch it back to a diamond and one. So, you know, you want to find the gaps in that thing. They're, they're ones at the elbow. And now everyone who's not being guarded needs to set a screen. Lucas off the mark on the three, and here comes Buford. Isaac Brown brings it up. Looking for a good move here. Drives the lane, and the shot is off the mark. We have a whistle. We've got to stop that dribble penetration. Number one rule in defense, get the ball out of the middle of the floor. Force it to the midpoint, contest the shot, and get that rebound. Here he comes off that drive. See, he got too deep into the perimeter there. You got to step up and A, you, you got to first get the ball out of the middle. Then when he's coming into the lane, you got to pinch down from the side. If you rotate inside out, you're going to expose that baseline. You're going to get killed all night long. Isaac Brown hits the first free throw, and it's 1-0. Coach Arnold comes in with the first sub with Theo Brown. Interesting story on the Brown family. They were all cousins. It's kind of like the Whipples. From That's right, from a year ago. That's right. All right, here come the Vikings trailing 2-0 in the early going. Once again, they're in that diamond and one. Four guys are playing a zone, and one's playing man-to-man -man on Hardman. Terrell back to Lucas as they play catch for a while. They're trying to set something up down the low post, it looks like. They're trying to get the ball into McCrary to get him started early. Good screen. There you go. McClain made a nice screen for Hardman. If you're not being guarded in this offense, go set a screen. Pick the slides of that zone. Terrell for three, off the mark. Rebound underneath the loose ball, and the Vikings will hold on. Look for a box set or a line set. Alvin Daniels in the game now for the Vikings. Watch for a step back shot. Replacing there it comes. Antoine McLean. Great help, great help by Crawford. Lucas trying to get something started underneath. Here's Hardman. Yes. Nice shot. Kept alive on. So Hardman ties it up. Or it's 2-2. Alvin Daniels kept that alive on the boards. Good ball moving by Buford as they get it into the forecourt. See, by shooting and hitting those two jumpers, that only doesn't set your offensive tempo. That sets your defensive tempo. They were able to get in that press right away. And a shot off the mark, and here come the Vikings. Here they go. You better get back. Here they go. Here's Hardman. What a play by Hardman. But they call an offensive foul. They call a charge. He might have been a little low there, but he that was tough. That was that was close. So Hardman gets his first personal. It's a great job by Theo Brown. Came right in there and got a charger up the bat. Now he's set. That's a good play. Full court pressure by the Vikings. Buford breaks it. Backward. Off the mark. The tip underneath. No good. And here come the Vikings. See, even though there wasn't a turnover on that press, they got exactly what they wanted. They forced all the county into a quick shot, which in turn turned right around, and they were able to score on the offensive end to transition. Nice pass underneath, and Daniels makes the easy layup. 4-2. Taylor County in the early going. And the shot is good by P.K. Sam. Oh, this is a lot of fun, folks, because now Buford County is just 
staying with their game plan. They're banging it inside the PK. They got a little bit of height advantage, and they're not letting the pressure rattle them. They're staying to the script. Tied at four, three and a half to go. A very low scoring first quarter as they get the bugs out. Playing in front of uh, statewide television here on GPTV. But they've been playing at a great high level of energy. Vikings are definitely looking for the open man. Being very patient. There you go, there he is in the short corner. And swing it back the other way, you have a jump shot. Right there, bang. Terrell for three, off the mark. Great rebound. Here's Lucas. And Lucas nice pass. looks underneath, nice play. As McCrary puts it home. Making that extra pass created that shot. They're in a 1-2, one, 1-1 one, one press. Gonna break it. Buford breaks it again. Crawford off the mark. I don't know if that's Here the shot the Coach Arnold wants. Nice play by Hardman. See, that press set that whole series of plays up. Even though there wasn't a turnover, it made Buford take a quick shot. And they were then with the miss, Taylor was able to come down and score that inside from the layup. Isaac Brown drives. Dishes off. A nice play, but Sam can't connect. And they reset. When you break that pressure, you must convert on, with your layups. If you don't convert, it's as good as a turnover. There and come. here come the Vikings on the run again. What a foul by Hardman. You've got to put a body on him or he's going to jump all day. Great timeout by Coach Arnold. He's going to try to settle this thing down quick. 10-4, Terrell County in the early going. Check out the replay on this one. Great foul. The young man... Perry never stopped coming, and he can finish hard. Akeem Hardman, one of the key players for Taylor County. And I think we're going to jump into one of these huddles here and find out what's going on. Let's go, let's go. With that dunk. And there you have it, so... Tough, tough start for Buford. I mean, the Vikings run and gun, bang, bang. Well, with that dunk now, they're able to set their press up. Every time they score, again, that sets them into a defensive tempo. Now, it was a good timeout by Coach Arnold. Settle them down a little bit, break the press. They just got to convert on their layups, and this, they'll be a two-point game now, or even right off the bat. Full court pressure continues by the Vikings. Buford, bad pass by Crawford, and the Vikings take over. So the pressure's really making a difference here for the Vikings. Just got to settle down, make the extra pass. Now, Taylor County will do this. They'll bring a wholesale changes here. They, have, they can play about 11 deep, and they'll come in with Davis on the perimeter, Dr Duger on the perimeter, and Drains down low. And Davis will inbound to Duger. P.K. Sam takes a rest. Lauren Sam, his brother, comes in. Big-time wheels can really fly. And there's a key stat right there. Three turnovers by Buford. Done by Taylor County. Vikings work it around. I like the way they're bringing in all these fresh players, Phil. I mean, they're gonna, they're definitely here for four quarters all the way, run and gun. It's like watching a bunch of army ants. They just keep coming at you. And they'll call this foul on Isaac Brown for reaching in. Now you really don't want that. Granted, he was going away from the basket, and I don't. If he makes that, you're gonna have a tough time beating him anyway. You want to keep him in front of you. That's his first personal. Play defense with your feet. Don't reach. This is Duger. Davis dribbles right side. And the jumper from the corner is off the mark by Duger. Duggar can hit that shot. And here come the Vikings on the run again. And Davis can't connect on the layup. And here comes Buford. And just like that, Phil, one minute to go in the first quarter. Three-point shot. And good by Rico Brown. As I alluded to earlier in the broadcast, you've got to locate him because he has no conscience. He'll shoot it from the bus. Taylor's got their biggest lead of the game at nine. It's 13 to four. Foul underneath. I don't think they're going to count the bucket. 
See, now the Taylor County's doing, they're going to try to bang it inside to their big people, Daniels. Try to get a quick, quick scores inside, then jump right back into that press. They can get you so many ways. They can get you off the press. They can go inside, outside. They're very lethal. Isaac Brown's going to have to watch out. He's got two personals already. Jonathan Davis on the line. And the first of two is no good. So with two personals, uh, Brown takes a seat. And replaced by Bunkley. He'll help them on the perimeter. And he can't get that, uh, that shooting touchdown just yet. Buford looking to come back. Hopefully going to play for the last shot if they can get into the front court here. There's the pressure. Rico Brown trying to force it inside. Got to run. They got to get back. And another turnover. Vikings. Moving well. Dugan. Duggar has that range. Duggar has that range. I keep calling him Dugan. It is Duggar, yeah. Excuse me for that. So Duggar lights it up for three, and it's... Let's see if we can get a last shot here. Good job by Bagley slowing things down. Bagley forced the shot from the corner, and the Vikings with two seconds, one second, and they kick their shot off as quarter number one comes to an end. So, one quarter in the books from the Coliseum in Macon. Taylor County, 13, view for seven, back with four after this. Yeah. Funding for broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. Welcome back to the Coliseum. Some happy cheerleaders just to be here at the state championship. It's going to be exciting for you. It's a lot of fun. Phil Hanson, Jim Tanaki are back here at courtside at the Macon Coliseum. Vikings and the Wolves. Buford trailing Taylor County 13-7. But, you know, Phil, I think Buford should be happy they're only down by six at this point, right? Man, Jim, you hit, you hit it right on the head there. They're only down six, and they've had a few turnovers here. They just need to tighten it up a little bit offensively. And when they break that press, they must convert, because if you don't convert, the ball's going back the other way. And we begin the second quarter. Buford gets the inbound as they look to uh, cut into this lead. Gutty move here by Coach Arnold, bringing Isaac Brown back in the game with two fouls. The Vikings defense is everywhere. It's almost like they've got six men on defense. There's your field goals for the first quarter. Taylor County hitting almost uh, 50%. There's a steal. Titus Lucas has got the hands of a robber. He is so quick. What a play. Here's a 2-2-1 two, two, press. They've changed it up a little bit. you got to flash somebody to the middle. Buford's doing a good job now breaking the press, and the three-point attempt is off the mark by Rico Brown. The Vikings come away with it. Crawford then slaps, it, slaps at the ball, and Buford takes over. Nice pass. Good drive. Nice drive down below. We've got a whistle as Isaac Brown drove baseline. That's a beautiful pass by Rico Brown to his cousin. Antoine McLean with the personal. Here's the play again. So you got to get some help. You got to stop him before he gets to the lane. You can't get it, that penetration too low. You're going to get killed. And the first of two is off the mark for Brown. So you got Theo Brown, Rico Brown, Isaac Brown. They're all cousins. And believe it or not, a fourth cousin is videotaping the game for Buford. There's a nice tip by Crawford there off the free throw. You got to pinch down on that block out. That shouldn't happen. And here come the Vikings. They're in a 1 2 2 press. Try to speed them up just a tad, give them a different look. Lucas at the top of the key, works it around. Yeah, that was a good move. That kind of slowed them down a little bit, got Taylor out of that helter skelter way they like to play and come at you. Now, it looks a little harem scarum, but it's very controlled. They do a nice job of funneling you to each sideline where the sideline can be your friend in that trap. We're Lucas, one... left side, it goes to Terrell, back out to Hardman. Hardman will take it from there all day long. You give him another foot, and he'll, uh, he'll take it. Here's Hardman, looked at it, decided not to go that way. Now, nice Hardman again. by Terrell. Off the mark, and here come the Vikings. We have a loose ball foul. And that's 
it's going to go against uh, Edward McCrary. Uh, check that, Rick Terrell. Rick Terrell gets the personal on the loose ball foul, and Buford takes over. Now watch the way Taylor County funnels everybody to the sideline here, where they can use the sideline as a defender, where one guy can be two, or two can be four. They break the press and get into the front court. Isaac Brown calling the play. Nice hands. Nice hands by Hardman, and he goes the distance. Nice job. Use his body to protect the ball. Again, they're funneling to the sideline. They're going to try to use the sideline and the half-court line, again, as a defender, where one can be two, three, and two can be four. And Buford breaking the press. Two on one now, and Brown can't handle the ball, and the Vikings take over. Nice pass inside. That's McLean. And Buford wants to talk about it. Once again, that pressure is making you throw these long passes and not which leading to the turnovers and going back scores on the other end. That's really like a four-point play. Check out this steal right here. Great hands. So he used his body to keep him between the ball and the basket. Nice job. Let's listen and see what Coach Arnold's having to say to his troops. Set it off, Whichever side that goes to, that's where we win. That's it. It goes. Now, PK, you with me? Now, everybody's got to sprint down here in defense. We got to protect the ball out front. Let's beat the press. Of course, there you see Coach Arnold's record. Get a good shot. Or set up. He's done pretty well. Beautiful there, fellas. A lot of wins. He's an he outstanding coach. Does a great job in the summer when he works basketball camps. Excellent teacher of the game. And, of course, Coach Hartman now. All right, let's go. I love this guy. He does a great job of telling these guys time and score and spacing. They throw it inside, skip it back outside, reverse the ball. They're very patient. Very, very well coached ball club. And, of course, Coach Hartman has a son playing in this game, and, of course, that's Akeem Hartman. <laughs> Looks a lot like it. There you see a turnover. There's your uh, story of the There's game. There's the ball game right there. I mean, that says it all right there. Those, exactly. two, those two graphics say it all. That's your ball game. And Buford breaks the press again. Under a lot of pressure, though. Here's Crawford drives the lane. There's another stat that, that's never talked about is hurries. You know, when you come in there, you take a shot, you miss it. Even though it's not a turnover, it's a quick shot. And it's not the, probably the shot you wanted. And the foul is on McLean. It's a second personal. Zach Crawford will go to the line to shoot two. And that touched about every part of the cylinder. It just didn't go down. It just didn't go down. <laughs> There's Crawford's uh, averaging almost 11 points on the season. Look for an extended man-to-man -man here. Taylor County leads at 19-10. Coming up on the midway point of the second quarter. Here from Macon. Hardman. There's a little screen and roll. Hardman drives the baseline. Looks to get it out. That's terrible. That's just a beautiful play. They drove it inside, kicked it outside for the open jump shot. We set it in the open. They love to shoot Look from three-point land, and they are something else. Buford trying to... Nice job. Way to break that press. Break now that run, press. Now run some sets. Rico Brown calling the play. Here's your three-point goals. Taylor County definitely taking a lot more shots. Two for eight. Yeah, Buford shooting 50%. You, know? you gotta love that's like shooting 75% from the floor. And you wonder that maybe they should take some more. Down low, Isaac Brown has no shot. The Vikings are everywhere on defense, and here they come, led by Hartman. Great job on defense, forced him below the, the block where he took the backboard out of play. Hartman looking to reset the offense here. He's got Terrell on the wing. Much for an isolation here for Hartman or a screen and roll on the wing. Here's the ISO. Bagley staying with him. Good job. Great defense by Bagley. That's it. McCurry's got to move. He's standing. This is Terrell. Okay, Terrell here comes the flash. Now look down low. There you nice go. move by McLean. And underneath. Nice play by Edward McCrary. And that was all brought about by... McLean flashing to the high post and the ducked it down low with a high-low action inside. 
Taylor County with their biggest lead of the game at 14 points over the Wolves of Buford. Three-point attempt off the mark by Isaac Brown. Down low, this is Crawford. Still can't get a clean shot off with all the Vikings sagging down low on that uh, zone defense. They definitely will contest all day long. Terrell gets it off. Hartman. Nice pass. Down low. Nice play. And they're going to call it up and down on Duggar. Great pass by Hartman. Instead, he, uh, he let go of the ball, so the Vikings will hold on as he's knocked out of bounds. Taylor comes in with Daniels and Lucas. Rick Terrell to inbound for the Vikings. And Terrell gets it out, and this is going to be... Oh, it won't be a half-court violation on that, no. Terrell on the right wing. Is the ISO down low? Tries to get to Hardman. Hardman tries to throw it off P.K. Sam's leg. It didn't quite work, and here comes Buford. He might have got bumped down low there. There you go. That's a good possession right there. Brown for three. Off the mark. Rebound underneath by Sam. P.K. puts it back up. Can't score. And here come the Vikings. No, now taken away by Buford. Great possession. What a play by Isaac Brown. Really scrapped there. P.K. kept that alive with the tip line, and they never gave up. You have to match Taylor County's intensity. Hardman on the wing. Hardman for three. Off the mark. And Crawford battling for position for the rebound. And it goes out of bounds off of Crawford. Have to look at that one again. In the game for uh, Taylor County is Bunkley. And the Vikings set it up again on, on the perimeter. Lucas tries to beat Bagley, cannot do it. Bagley playing some really good defense. He's a hard-nosed kid. Here's Lucas, drives the lane, stops, has no shot, now throws it away. Uh, you never want to jump the pass, Jimmy. You never want to jump the pass. And we have a jump ball. Possession arrow is uh, facing towards Buford, so Buford will take over. Problem is, when you jump up in the air to pass the basketball, if the defense adjusts, there's nowhere for you to go. You're not Peter Pan. You can't fly, so you're going to get the turnover. There's your field goal percentage, and again, hey, that tells the story, huh? It's hard to beat somebody when they're scoring 52% from the field. They're going to beat a lot of people shooting that. All right, the Wolves to inbound. Brown looking for an open man. Good. And look pass back. And look middle. There you go. Here comes Rico. We only have 10 seconds to get it over the timeline. Look up. It's a great class. Great pop up by PK Sam. Nice drive down low. And the hoop. Super job by Isaac, Isaac Brown. Used the rim to block his, the opponent's hand. And now the Vikings try to beat them at their own game. Try to get down here quick. I'll have to reset. That's Davis. Davis on the left side, and we have a whistle as Drains was driving to the hoop. He looks slender, but he's very wiry strong. Had a, had a nice game against Southwest Christian in the semis. You know, I know you're not big on height, as far as height advantage and everything else. These guys are great shooters. They have a lot of speed, playing great defense. They're tough. Exactly. I'm not a big height mismatch. I'm a talent mismatch guy, and speed kills. And you can be small, but if you're fast and aggressive, it makes up a lot for that. Watch for a shot in the corner coming back to the inbounder. Duggar at the top of the key. Vikings look to work around the left side and a miscommunication between Drains and Turner. And they turn it over. And look at this. See, here's what you're talking about. The Vikings are bringing in five new guys now. It's like wholesale changes. It's like when a new hotel takes over management. These guys come in with a whole group of five that just come and get you again. They're very fresh. Meantime, Brown's been playing the whole game. He's stuck in the corner. Uh, get away from that sideline. And P.K. Sam battling for the rebound. Here's Rico Brown he's down tough, low. He's tough down low. And finally, the rebound by McLean, and we have a whistle. That's his third. That's big. Coach Harden will counter that and bring in Bunkley to replace McLean. That's going to hurt. He's awful tough on the boards, and he sets their tempo down low defensively because if they do break down on the perimeter, they've got the big fella to answer down low. So three fouls on McLean, the big story here in the early going. Theo Brown's checking the game for Buford. He had the ball a moment ago. Here's P.K. Sam down low, and a little bumping going on 
between Sam and Bunkley. Buford's getting them in a little bit of foul trouble here. One more, they're in the bonus. Of course, P.K. Sam, a uh, wide receiver for the football team. And the Wolves uh, finished second this year in football. They lost to Commerce in the championship game. Good rebound by Crawford. Now hang on to that ball. P.K. off the mark on the one and one. And look at the Vikings on the run again. They can fly. They just run so fast. That's why defensive transition is going to be a major key today. And McCrary puts the finishing touch on the layup. And it's 26-14, Taylor County. Here's Theo Brown. Nice dribble move by Brown. Goes down the lane. The shot, no good. And rebounded by the Vikings. No, loose ball by Crawford. Now they're jumping for it. Oh, you got to convert, but I love the way they're playing. They're playing so hard. Keep working like that. Good things are going to happen, but you got to convert on that offensive end. You can't get much closer than that. Isaac Brown hard. had a great chance to score two there and missed the opportunity. But a lot of that has to do with Taylor County. They speed you up so fast that you're not getting that simple look. And here come the Vikings. Setting up for what looks to be the last play of the first half. Buford's keeping everybody in front of them. They're running that high double low stack. There you see the time as Bergman drives the lane. Oh, you gotta stop that dribble penetration. What a play by Akeem Hardman. Times it perfectly. And the Vikings double up the score on Buford here in the first half. 28-14. Well, the turnovers are the key, and, that's, and a couple quick, easy baskets by Taylor County, that's where your difference of your 14 points is. Transition has definitely played a part for the Vikings. Great pass. Look inside. Use the rim to block his hands. Nice job. Of course, that was McCrary that scores the easy layup. And the Vikings just kept the pressure going. Check out. And Hardman, of course, had a great first half. Let's go court side to John Nelson. Hello, John. Thanks, G, here with Anzi Hardman. You guys look like bears at a picnic and a record going 78 RPMs. You're trying to press them out of the building. Uh, well, we definitely try to keep pressure on them because that's one of our strengths. Our depth is also our strength, but it's taking us a little while to get into it right now. But we are going to keep the pressure on them. I promise you that. That's what I was going to say. This like, One of the big things is that you're bringing in five fresh guys, five fresh guys, five fresh guys to try and keep them beaten down the whole time. We're going to see if we can wham down and let the best man be standing after 32, 32 minutes. And the one thing that I also noticed is you're also telling the kids that you don't want them to relax. You want them to crash the boards at the same time. Exactly. we got to dominate the boards because that's going to make a difference in this ball game. If we allow them to rebound, then we're not going to be able to get out and run. And that's part of that's a major part of our game. Angie Hartman. Angie Hartman, thanks for being with us. He's up 14 at the break. Let's send it back over to Jim and Phil. All right, thanks, John. It's Taylor County, 28. Buford, 14. One half of the book, one half of the game in the books in the single A championship. We'll be back with second half action after these messages and the word. for a broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. This is GPTV, your PBS station, serving Atlanta and all of Georgia. GPTV, bringing you the best. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. And... Uh and welcome back to Macon, Taylor County, with the lead at halftime over Buford in the single A championship, 28 to 14. Let's go courtside now with John Nelson. Thanks, G. Here with Principal Bonnie Brandon of Taylor County. I got to ask you, you're up two touchdowns here at the break. What does this mean to the entire town of Butler? Oh, we're just very excited. This is the first time since 1966 that the Vikings uh, men's team has made it to the playoffs, and we just want to go home with a state championship. It's been a long, hard four years for us, and we're just proud to be here. Well, you're also talking about a long, hard 35 years. Now, what does this mean to say, you know, the town of Butler and everybody else is there? Is this one of those situations where the 8,000 people bring 7,000 and the last one turns out the lights? Well, I think we brought a large crowd today. I don't think there's much going on in Taylor County with us being here. And just the whole town, the whole county is just very proud of these young men and Coach Hardman, Coach Towns, and the team. And we just hope to carry home a state championship. And with basketball season, what does 
basketball mean to Taylor County? Not just this particular day and everything, but what is basketball and athletics and academics and wrapping all that? What does that mean to the folks in Butler? Well, I think a lot of people, uh, the, the sports in our county are, are just very, very important. We focus on academics because to participate in any kind of sports, you've got to make the grade. So we start with that. And then we just have a lot of outstanding athletes in the county, not just basketball, but football, uh, baseball, golf, tennis, just uh, all the sports. And, and our kids are just real excited about being here. Okay, Principal Bonnie Brandon, thanks for being with us. Taylor County, you're up 28-14 at the break. Let's send it back to Jim. All right, thanks, John. And on the floor now are the two teams that are going to be participating and playing in the double-A championship, the Calhoun Yellow Jackets and the East Hall Vikings, a big day of basketball here on GPTV. That one's going to be a good game. you got Calhoun's like the little engine that could. Against Randolph Clay, they just hung in there and hung in there and, and, and got the victory. All right, let's go back courtside and John Nelson. Here with Matt McCoy. Bring out one principal, bring out another one. Matt, i got to ask you, with football season the way it was, basketball season the way it is, What's, what's this whole run been like for you guys up there? It's been really exciting at Buford. Uh, we kind of expected to be in it in football, but it was a surprise to be here at basketball season. Now, it's about a two and a half hour drive. Did you declare a state holiday or something in Wolf Country to make everybody come down here? No, actually it worked out well. We had a teacher work day today. So the students were off and then we just granted everybody else uh, leave if they wanted to come to Macon. Now you were talking about what this whole ride's been and how exciting has it been. What has it been to the student body? How's the student body wrap themselves around the, both Wolves franchise or football teams and the basketball team? Well, with 500 and, uh, roughly 536 students, uh, we have probably 200 that are involved in some sort of extracurricular activity. So it's a close-knit family, and no matter what we do, we're together when we do it. Now you talk about close-knit families. Let's talk a little bit about that. Buford, not necessarily the biggest of high schools, is it different? Do you wrap yourselves around the school and around athletics and academics more since you're small, or is it more of a closer-knit thing? I think it's a community thing. Uh, being the only school in the city of Buford, everything that we do, it draws the crowd from Buford, from park and rec ball all the way up to uh, the high school drama. Now, what else is going on at Buford High School that everybody else should be aware of and knowing about? What's going on up there at right the game today, we'll be flying Trent Bagley up to uh, Gainesville, to the Gainesville Airport, and, and he'll be participating in the uh, region literary meet, singing in a quartet. So he's quite a young man. He's our star student, quality athlete, and just an all-around great young man. Matt, thanks for being with us. I'm not going to try my singing voice, but I am going to send it back to Jim regardless. Thank you, John. You know, I've always wondered, Phil, what happens on those teacher work days? <laughs> I thought that's when they do that during the regular day, when they grade papers at home at night. <laughs> uh, at meantime, we have the first half stats for you uh, of the single-A championship game between Taylor County and Buford, and there you go. Boy, I tell you what, that field goal percentage is something else. Well, 57% is awful tough to beat, but a lot of that is on layups and dunks, so that's a little misleading. Buford leads in rebounds, but I'll tell you what, because of the Vikings' speed, it really has, doesn't matter. Huh? It negates that. Again, that speed kills every time. And turnovers, what can you say? Well, you just can't, you know, you turn over eight times, that's not only eight times you don't get possessions, that's eight, that's eight times they're getting possessions against you, so that, that hurts. Vikings' first trip in the playoffs since 1966. I mean, that's a long time. I, I tell you what, but they're making the most of it now. <laughs> they certainly are, leading by 14 at the half. I tell you what, the crowd is really into it, too. Well, because uh, you've you got fans from both schools, the cheerleaders, teacher uh, work days, fans, everyone's teacher no work reason days, not to all be the here. teachers. I mean, you know, everybody's <laughs> here. They're having a great time. It's a lot of fun. All right, we continue with the uh, halftime between Taylor County and Buford. We'll take a break. We'll be back after these messages and a word from GPTV. Funding for broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. You're watching member-supported GPTV, your PBS station, bringing you the best. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. Welcome back to the Single A Basketball Championship between Buford and Taylor County as we get set for the second half. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, you know, your, your leading scorers, first of all, Taylor County, Hardman and McCrary, both have eight points apiece. Buford uh, is led by Sam and Millsap, each with four points. Well, right now, what Buford has to get done here, they must be patient offensively. 
make Taylor County play half-court defense. Make them go from weak side to strong side, wear them down a little bit, which may take some of their legs out of their transition. If you're just joining us, the Vikings are in the white uniforms going from right to left, and of course Buford in the green uniform go. going from left to right. Excellent job by Coach Arnold and Buford. They sped up, ironically enough, they sped up Taylor County, which caused a quick turnover by Lucas. I mean by Terrell, I'm sorry. And here come the Wolves as they try to break the press as they've been doing all game. And Hardman tied up Bagley down there. And Buford will inbound. Now they must convert against Taylor's pressure. Bagley gets it into Sam. And Isaac Brown now will bring it up to the front court. Just be patient, get a couple passes and a few ball reversals. Quick shot. Brown with the jumper off the mark. And loose ball underneath, and P.K. Sam, the big guy, picks it up. There you go, rebounding. That's a major key. You've got to get second opportunities against these guys. Nice Crawford cut. looks underneath to Brown. Excellent job. Excellent, excellent job. Ran out offensive set there, a little UCLA cut. Passed the wing, shuffle cut off the perimeter, off the post there, and got the score. So Isaac Brown will go to the line, and he'll shoot two. Nice job. There's your numbers on Isaac Brown for the season. He's a very steady player. And already the Vikings are bringing in substitutions. Coach Hardman wasn't really thrilled with the way they started off, so he, a few little substitutions here. Maybe change the matchups and then get him right back in the game. Brown for the second of two. And he's off the mark. And big rebound by McCrary, and here come the Vikings. This is Lucas. Keep in front. Hardman gets it down low. Nice passing underneath by the Vikings and score the goal by Alvin Daniels. Well, I just can't get over how well coached these guys are. They just pick you apart. Any opening they have, they flash into an area. Nice job. So Daniels has a chance to make it a three-point play and take a, another look at it. See, the way that happened, whenever your man goes to double team, don't stand. Diagonally cut to the front of the rim and you'll get a layup like da Daniels got right there. And Daniels cannot convert on a three-point play. Good rebound by Sam. This is Brown in the front court. Now make them work defensively a little bit. Lucas on Brown. There's a couple shuffle cuts. There you go. Crawford tried to find Brown underneath. Rico Brown, that is. And it goes out of bounds. Oh, uh, he got it dribbled below that foul line to make that pass. It breaks that angle. And you always want to bounce pass into the post, air pass out. And here come the Vikings. This is Titus Lucas running the show for the Vikings. But I like the way Buford's coming out here in the second half. A little pick and roll. Hardman doesn't have a shot. They try to go down low. Good defense by P.K. Sam. Here come the Wolves. Here we go. Got a turnover here. Let's see if they can convert. Bagley finds Brown in the corner. Nice pass. Back out to Bagley. Tries to drive the lane. Stolen away by the Vikings. And this is Lucas. Turnover equals score. 32-15, Taylor County over Buford. And a foul underneath. This one's going to go against Hardman. The one thing you, you want to get out of, you don't, even though they're down here, you don't want to try to make up all the points in one shot. Here's the right basket. Yeah, he was, he was moving. Plus, he was a little low. You usually don't get that call if you don't get him outside the, the lane. Isaac Brown connects on the first of two. 32-16, Taylor County. If Buford here has luxury now, they're scoring, but the clock stopped. This is playing to their favor. Yeah, that would help if they could keep shooting free throws, right? And the second by Brown is good. And now this allows them to set in some token pressure. This is Lucas to bring it across the timeline. Six minutes to go, third quarter. From the centerplex in Macon. We're going to a diamond and one defense, Buford is. One guy's playing man-to-man, -man, they'll guard and Hardman. Man-to-man, everyone else is playing the zone. Lucas back outside, looks to reset it. Bagley's running the baseline. 
Lucas fakes a shot, drives, now this is off Terrell, three, no good. Rebound, Lucas, and he'll reset it. It's okay, you're making them do some things they don't want to do. They want to score quick, and you're making them be, have a little bit of patience. Hard pass. Pass. great pass down low to Alvin Daniels. Boy, nice diagonal touch of the basket. Super job by Daniels. And full court pressure continues by the Vikings. Taylor County by 17. This is Brown, off the mark. And we have a whistle on the eighth, and a loose ball foul on the Wolves. Well, that's what they do to you. They, 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 you come down, you think it's like fool's gold. You got a quick uh, shot to knock down. You take that quick one and miss it, and then here they come back the other way. Checking in the game for Buford is Theo Brown. We mentioned it in the first half. There are three Browns on this team. Theo Brown, Rico Brown, Isaac Brown, all are cousins. And their fourth cousin is videotaping the game. He's the cameraman. <laughs> and Hardman tries to go baseline. He stepped out of bounds, and the Wolves will take over. Good job. They funneled him to the midpoint and used the baseline as a defender, where one guy could be two. Buford having to break the full court pressure again. Crawford gets it over to Bagley. He gets it across the timeline. Guarded tightly by Terrell. And you never want to turn your back on these guys because they'll trap when the ball can't see him. Bagley gets it left side. Crawford. Shuffle cut. Drives towards the hoop. Stops and is surrounded by three Vikings. Stolen away. Now Crawford tries to pick pocket. He can't do it. Here comes Hartman. Stop the ball. Hartman. Nice pass down low. And there's Daniels. We got to stop the ball. That's a must. You must stop the ball. Alvin Daniels coming up big here in the third quarter. And Buford just simply wants to talk about it. Well, he's taking a, a 20. Slow it down a little bit. And this time out, you know, you basically want to tell the guy, just relax, let's run our stuff. Nice cut. Good finish. Use the rim to block the defensive man's hand there. Super job. I like the nice soft touch, too, by Daniels. Let's listen to Coach Hartman. Let's go, Avery. Let's go, Avery. Let's see what we got. Still match it up, man. Okay? Let me get it. Let's push. All right, let's go. Keep going. All right. Well, he's keeping the heat on. So, base guard now on 12. We got to help out on 12. Everybody, man to man. And, of course, right, Coach first, first roll. Intensity. Intensity. One, two, three. Intensity. Intensity. Now, what's Coach Arnold telling him? He's, don't panic. Relax. You know, we're, 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 granted, this isn't the greatest situation to be in. You know, you'd rather be ahead, but you're not out of it. And this is kind of indicative of their season. They've been counted out all year long, and they've hung around, hung around, hung around, and come up with a lot of Ws. Alvin Daniels with a big third quarter. He's up to eight points now. As Buford breaks the press. Crawford on the drive. And we have a whistle. Super job breaking that press, but you must convert against their pressure. If they're going to press, you've got to attack that press and score and see if they want to come back and press you again. Daniels gets called on his first personal, and this is how it happened. So Crawford will go to the line. Again, the clock has stopped, and they're here, able to make up a few points here. on the day, three points and three rebounds. The leading rebounder for Buford, though, is P.K. Sam. He's got eight boards already. And very active. And Crawford hits the free throw, and it's 36-18, Taylor County. This is Lucas, right side, Hartman. He looks to drive on Brown, dishes off to McCrary, and we have a whistle. They'll play defense with your feet. Can't reach. That was Zach Crawford's uh, first personal foul, the team's third. Vikings, nice pass underneath to Hartman, and he can't buy a hoop. Had an easy layup there, Phil. He just didn't convert on the end, but they got the steal back the other way. This is Lucas, right side, Hartman. He thought about the three, now he drives. Dishes off, there's Daniels. Well, he's very unselfish, passes the ball extremely well. Alvin Daniels with a big third quarter. And the reason he's able to score, Alvin Daniels isn't just playing stationary. He is diagonal cutting to the rim every time. His man goes to double team. He is moving to the basket, getting easy layups. Daniels now has 10 points on the game. Big, big body, space eater, gets in there, rebounds, shooting little chippies all day long. Titus Lucas gets called on the See personal. He never stops play. moving and goes right to the, to the rim. Nice job. Back to live action. Right side it goes, Crawford. As Buford tries to cut into this lead. And an off 
offensive foul is called on Crawford. Looks like he tried to use that elbow a little too much. And here comes Lucas. The Vikings could take their time as they'd like. Look at the turnovers. There we go again. You've got to value the basketball. It's like gold. Look at the points off turnovers. You know, that, that's really key. Taylor County lighting it up. Great inside-outside action. Lucas misses on the Good rebound by three pointer. Here comes Buford. So that's a turnover solely due to the pressure. You came down with the dribble, they kind of jabbed at you. The speed of the game, you turned it over. That was uh, PK's brother, Lauren Sam, who turned it over for Buford. Had and a real game. nice semifinal game. Bunkley's back in for Taylor County as Taylor County continues to make those substitutions. And boy, that really does play a key, Phil. I mean, these guys are running and gunning. they got to stay fresh. And Coach Hardman, if anybody looks like they're lagging, they're out and somebody else is in. Exactly. Plus, that wear and tears on your opponent. You just got to sit there and they keep coming at you. Plus, as a coach, you got to keep thinking, all right, the matchups, who you got, who do you have, who do you have. And you keep changing and changing and changing. And it just mentally, they wear you down. Where they, You have to value every possession against these guys. You've got to catch that ball, square, look, bring it up. When you start to go to sleep or you're not paying attention to detail, they'll kill you. There you see the guys, the Vikings on the sideline. Coach Arnold's done a real nice job. I like the way, even though they're down here, Buford, they've come out and they've tried to establish a few things offensively. Unfortunately, they just haven't been able to convert. And you can tell the Viking fans are pretty happy at this point. Exactly. They're sitting pretty. First time in the Championship since 1966. They're making the most of it. Like you said, the whole town is here. But it's not over by no means. They can't celebrate yet. We got a lot of basketball to play. All right, the Vikings to inbound. Terrell looked inbound, trying to find somebody open. Finally finds McCrary, and they get into the front court. Vikings looking to set it up. This is Hardman. Well, you have to have great guards to have a championship team. In the nice pass underneath. Well, I tell you what, they know how to find the open man, and McCrary knows how to uh, take advantage. Their guards are awful strong. Nice steal by Lucas. Gets it out to Hardman. Hardman drives the lane, dishes off Lucas with the layup, and he can't, con can't convert. There's a foul on the play. Wow, I thought he got that clean. Must have got him with the body. You want to block a shot, you want to take your inside hand and go over the, your opponent's outside shoulder. Fouls on Theo Brown, and that's how he did it right there. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what, he had a lot of ball, though. He got the body a little bit there, but when you block a shot, you want to take your inside hand and go over your opponent's outside shoulder. You'll never touch him. Titus Lucas on the line to shoot two. And the first one is just off the mark. Something over that cylinder just can't buy a, a hoop from the free throw line. Here comes Buford. Come to the middle. Come to the middle. Now look opposite. There you go. Now go. Take your time. Bagley looks to drive length of the court. Stolen away by the Vikings. If you've got the open layup, take it and convert. However, if you don't have the numbers, pull it back out and then run your set. Here's the replay. Bagley just can't. Can't get to the hoop. Great defensive play well, by Tyson. He's got asbestos hands. He's so fast. What's amazing is it was only a split second earlier. Lucas was on in the backcourt. It's like there's 10 of them on the floor. <laughs> Down low. And the attempt missed by Lawrence Sam. That's it. Get it inside. Keep coming at him. You must be very resilient against Taylor County. Lawrence Sam on the line, he'll shoot two. And the first of two is good, and they cut that Taylor County lead in half. It's 40 to 20.
Now, you don't want to try to score all these points up in one possession. Just keep chipping at it. You want to try to get it at least down to 12 or 10 by the quarter break with the team. Good defense by the Wolves on the full court pressure. Now the Vikings take the ball back. Duggar on the drive, and we have a whistle. Uh, it's kind of a, you follow him about 30 feet from the basket. I don't know if he really wanted to do that. Fouls on Trent Bagley. That's his third personal, and the team's sixth. The Vikings look to inbound the ball. This is Jonathan Davis. Davis drives, stops, and pops. No good. Rebound underneath. And a great block by Crawford, but I think he's going to get called for the foul on Bunkley. Super job rebounding. Just kept crashing the glass, fouled the play, didn't rest, got the quick chippy. There's Bunkley underneath, and here comes Crawford. I think he missed the ball. <laughs> well, the rule of thumb, you never want the offensive man to get the ball over his shoulders. Make him earn it from the strike. Maybe feeling a little jitters being here in the uh, championship game, huh? Well. <laughs> Bunkley with the second attempt. Now that happens all the time. I've seen that countless times. The guy shoots an air ball on the first free throw and then drills the second one. 41-20, Taylor County. Under two minutes to go now, third quarter. Good pass, and here's Brown for three. Yes. Nice shot. Isaac Brown on the three-pointer. And it's 41-23, Taylor County. Buford's coming in with Pete Pellot. Looks like the Vikings are trying to rush the ball up there too quickly. And Bagley has the ball for Buford, gets it across the timeline. Here goes Bagley, drives nice the pass. lane. Nice pass to Crawford, and he can't convert. And check that. That was uh, Pellet. Pellet. Matt Pellet on the drive. Coming to give him a little bit of energy. He's running the floor well. Here's after the pass. Pellet. He's got to use his left hand. If he uses his left hand, he scores. Because <laughs> the defense man has to go through you. You always want to keep ball you and the man principle, offensively or defensively. Keep your body between the opponent and the ball. Of course, Pellet was in the act of shooting. He gets two shots. The first of two is good. Here they come again. A whole new wave. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> get the fresh legs in there, and they're ready to run again. They mentally wear you down as opposed to physically. And Pellet's second shot is off the mark. Big rebound underneath by Bagley, and he cannot convert. Here come the Vikings. Continue to move that ball around. Lucas drives, has it stolen. Here come the Wolves. Brown looks to go to the distance. Nice layup. There we go. And just like that, the lead's down to 15. It's not, I told you we had a lot of basketball to play. Lucas across the timeline. One minute to go, third quarter. Lucas. Hardman looks down low, and we have a whistle. You got to, can't let McCrary post right on that block where he's been posting all year long and in practice. You've got to kick him off the box, so now it's a little different shot. Sanford Donahue with the personal foul. And on the line for the Vikings is Edwin McCrary. Coach Arnold's putting some fresh legs in, giving a little jump start to the offense and the defense a little bit. Pellet's having a nice game. McCrary can't convert. And the Wolves can cut the lead down to 13 on this possession, possibly 12. Just be patient. And they, that hurt. Bagley can't find an open man and gets called for uh, five seconds there. Against that press, you must flash middle, look middle, then skip it opposite, and then up you go. All right, Lucas. Quarterbacking the team. Looks like they're going to play for the last shot with 40 seconds to go. Again, now here's that double high stack offense. They're going to pop out, and here comes a screen on a ball. Hardman trying to get around. Now goes baseline. Hardman with the move. Can't get it in. Here come the Wolves. Look at the last shot of the half here. Theo Brown with under 20 to go. And we have a whistle. Well, you don't want to reach that far away from the basket. He'd like to take that one back if he could. 
So now again, the clock is stopping, and Buford's coming down here, able to chip, chip, chip away at that lead, and there's no clicks off the clock. That's Hardman's third personal foul. This is Theo Brown. Every team takes the personality of the coach, and you can really see Buford. They're kind of relaxed, and that's Coach Arnold. I mean, he's very intense, but he's low-key. He didn't get you know, all excited when they were down there at that big margin, and now they're right back in the ballgame. Just 13 points down now. Taylor County leading at 41-28 as the Vikings look again to play for the last shot. Buford, tough defense, and the Vikings keep it. Oh, now we got a timeout by the Vikings. Smart call by Rick Terrell as he felt the pressure near the sideline. Teams that like to press don't like the pressure applied to them, and that's what Buford did. They came in there with some fresh legs at Pellet, and they came in and got after him a little bit, and that kind of took back Taylor County. Now, it was a nice time out there by Coach Hardman. He's telling the guys, look, we got to match this intensity again. Let's get back to playing Viking basketball. And what's going on in the Buford huddle right now? The guys were doing great. We're right back where we want to be. They had that 20-point lead. Now let's look at the clock. We're right in it. So let's just keep chipping here. No second shots. Let's force them away from the basket, make everything catching it, going away from the bucket, and one and done. If we can get it back on the offensive side, let's try to get the shot the last of the half. All right, the Vikings to inbound. That's a walk. He can't move. It's a spot throw in. There you go. That's it. You called it. On a spot throw and dead ball situation, you cannot move as the inbounder. Now, after a basket, you can run the baseline. Well, here come the Wolves with a chance to cut it to 11. There nice. you see your time. Theo Brown from downtown. What a shot. Great pass by Isaac. And that's the way the quarter ends. And we are in for a Donnie Brook now. Ten-point ball game, and it is up to grass. Taylor County leads it by 10. 41-31 over Buford. Back for the fourth quarter after this. broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. You're watching the GHSA Basketball Championships on GPTV. And welcome back to the Single A Championship. Theo Brown with a big three-pointer, Phil. Super pass by Isaac Brown. You always want to pass to where the pressure comes from. The pressure came from the wing. He kicked it to the side. Theo stepped in there and knocked it down. We Should got be a ball an game exciting now, Jimmy. fourth quarter. Yeah, you bet. Ten-point lead. 41-31 Taylor County as we play the final eight minutes from the centerplex in Macon. Plus and we're Buford underway. Opens with the ball. Chance to cut it to eight. This is Brown. Isaac Brown, that is. As Buford looks to work it around to find the open man. And a nice drive down low by Trent Bagley. Well, there's an extended man-to-man -man pressure here. Bagley cuts it to eight. It's 41-33. And for the first time since early first quarter, the Vikings are starting to feel the pressure. Nice double team. Lucas. Jimmy, have you seen now how Taylor is getting pushed away from the basket? They're not attacking with their ears laid back like they were the first three quarters. They're going away from the basket. Here comes another pass away. Hardman, cross-court pass. To Terrell, and what a dunk by Edwin McCrary. Great dribble penetration by Terrell. Great dribble penetration. Buford breaks the full court pressure. Brown gets it left side. Turn his face. This is the other Brown now. Hard to keep up with the Brown family as Batley launches a three and misses. Right, get back. You got to get back. Hardman off the break. Stocks pops for three. Off the mark. Oh, you got to rebound, Jim. You got to rebound. Oh, nice play by Hardman as he found Edward McCrary underneath. I tell you what, McCrary has had himself a ball game. Check out this dunk he had here. I tell you, he has electric hops. He can really explode. Now, Theo Brown, when he fouls McCrary there from the back right to put McCrary on the line, you never want that guy to get his hands above his shoulders. If you're going to foul him, make sure that ball stays down. Here you saw McCrary has 12 points on the game. Buford has to control the boards if they want to stay in this thing. Edwin for his second of two, no good. Free throws will definitely play a big part coming down the home stretch. 
Buford trying to get across the timeline in less than 10 seconds, and they do. Isaac Brown drives and loses the ball, I and it goes off of Terrell. I thought he got mugged for Taylor oh. County. Yeah, I thought that was a foul there, but refs don't call it. There you see Coach Hardman jumping up and down on the sidelines, yelling for his corner. defense. Get out of that corner. Crawford, outside. Nice pass. This is Theo Brown again from downtown. Oh, he's off the mark. Rebound, P.K. Sam, and he puts it home. P.K. Sam controlling the boards both offensively and defensively, and Taylor County's lead is back down to eight. Basketball's such a great game. It's such a series of runs. This is Hardman outside. Hardman drives. This is off left side, a three-point attempt, and we have a whistle before the shot by Rick Terrell, and it's not quite sure what the call was, but there is a timeout. So a timeout called by Taylor County. Coach Hardman wants to talk it over. Exactly. He's saying, I could just see the... In Phil, I'd like to tell you, hey, buddy, don't forget now, don't miss Georgia's only statewide high school sports and academics program, Prep Sports Plus, Saturday mornings at 11, right here on GPTV. It's a great show. We, uh, we have a good time doing it, too. It's fun getting out there to all the communities and uh, talking to coaches and kids, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Here's Coach McCown. One stack. One for low stack. And look, pop to the opposite side and out. Wing guys, two and three, pop across and out, and then let's execute from there. Now, fellas, mm -hmm. can we trap 12? Don't need 32 all over. Okay, we gotta leave. We gotta move, take it off. Well, I'll tell you what, you can tell Coach Arnold's getting into it now. Exactly, but he's so calm, and see, his team can translate that to themselves, where he's just not getting excited. Guys, this is what we need to do. Let's execute here. Let's score. Let's run it again. Score. And, guys, we're right back in this thing. Rick Terrell to inbound for the Vikings. Just under six minutes to go in the final quarter. The single-A state championship between Taylor County and Buford. Buford's doing a nice job defensively. They're making Taylor go away from the basket every time they receive the ball. They're not cutting so quickly to the basket like they used to. So you pick, they're keep going back towards half court. Hardman looks to drive the lane. Stops and pops. Yes! Big shot. Big, big shot there. Cannot allow that dribble penetration. Get the ball out of the middle of the floor. Akeem Hardman with a big ball game for the Vikings and the league is back up to 10. Pressure in the corner. Brown surrounded. Gets it out to P.K. Sam. Here's Bagley for three. Yo, so close. And the Vikings grab the loose ball. And travel. And a travel on Lucas, so Buford will keep it. Buford's got to keep that ball out of the corner because they're going to use the sideline and the baseline as a defender now, where one defender can be three or two can be four. Keep it out of the corner. Trent Bagley. Calling the play, gets it outside to Theo Brown. Brown to his cousin Isaac, back to Theo. Theo to Bagley. Looks, thinks about the three, doesn't take it. They're gonna give him that. It looks like they are, Bagley. Right side, here's Brown, he drives, and it's taken away by the Vikings. Gonna value that basketball, Jim. And a whistle on the play. Again, that's why I love this game so much, because the series of runs, one team will have momentum going, and they're cooking right along, and all of a sudden, a few turnovers, a steals, a big shot, and all of a sudden, the momentum swings back the other way, and the other team tries to recapture that. There's just nothing better than basketball. Edward McCrary, who's had a big second half for the, Vi for the Vikings, is on the line. Struggling a little bit here at the free throw line. Knock that one down. It's clutch. The lead back up to 11 for Taylor. Underneath, loose ball, and the Vikings will take over. Oh, that's good. That's a heartbreaker right there. Had a chance to get a rebound. Now you give Taylor another possession. Plus, they can run some clock down with this. That's a double dipper right there. So with the lead 11, they have a chance to make it 13, maybe even 14. Because your opponent now is Taylor also. It's the clock. Here's Hardman on the drive. And we have a whistle underneath. And this possession is killing them. They three cracks at it. Now there's another foul. They go back to the line. They must stop that dribble penetration. Get that ball out of the middle of the floor, 
force it to the midpoint. That's the area between the sideline and the basket. Keep it to the midpoint, contest all shots, and you must rebound. Akeem Hardwin, Hardman on the line to shoot two. He's got a nice touch, Phil. That's, he's a scorer. He's a big time scorer. Great body, uses it well. Great body control. Dozen points on the day for Akeem Hardman. And the lead is 13 for Taylor County. 48-35. There you see it, four and a half to go. Here comes the scissor cut. Good play. Looks strong. Oh, nice defense by McLean down low, but he's going to get called for a personal. Yeah, that's his fourth. Looks for coach to go to Daniels if they need the sub inside. Watch McLean on this block right here. Bang. Again, the clock has stopped. Able to chip away at this lead. Lauren Sam hits the first of two. Nice stroke. And the second also gets her. It's an 11-point lead now with 4.26 to go in the final period. This is Lucas, guarded by Bagley. Hard ball. Back out, Lucas. Lucas open for a moment. Now dishes out, and they look to reset. This is Hardman. Notice, though, you're, you're right. Hardman's taking the ball further out. Exactly. They're offense. pushing him away from the basket. Now they got to help right here. Get it out of the middle of the floor. Good job, PK Sam. Nice job. Here's Hardman on the drive. Loses it. And the loose ball recovered by Lucas. So that tandem of Lucas and Terrell is a nice luxury to have because they handle the ball so well. Lucas looks to drive, loses control, and out of bounds, and Buford will get it. Again, now Buford caused that turnover with a little bit of pressure, got them to get out of their run-and-gun set, made them do some offensive things. Now they can come down and chip away at this light lead some more. And now, of course, it's key for Buford to take advantage of these turnovers. Got to score, Jimmy. You got to score. Or just at least get a good look at it. Isaac Brown up top as he looks to run the offense now. Bagley left wing. Has no shot. Left corner. P.K. Sam off the mark. And a big rebound underneath by McLean. And here come the Vikings. Nice job by Taylor to limit Buford to one and done. Got to get back. Here's Lucas on right wing. Thought about it. Now takes it back and looks to reset the offense. Vikings don't have to rush, do they, Phil? No, not at all. Here's Hardman. As he looks to. Here's this double high for stack. An open lane. We talked about this in the pregame. You've got to put a guy on the top of that stack and a guy to the inside of that stack, or they're just going to keep doing that merry-go-round thing all day long. By keeping a guy on the top and then the inside of it, when he pops out there, you'll always have ball you and the man. They won't be able to reverse the pass. Lucas fouled by Bagley. It's Bagley's third personal. Georgetown made that famous, isn't that? That's the old Clems Clemson Tiger Paw. Hardman was on the line there, but it's supposed to be Lucas uh, shooting the free throws. The old Globetrotter trick. Yeah, I missed those days, you know. I think they're coming into town next week, too. No more uh, Curly Neal and Metal Arc Lemon, though. These guys are gone. Big free throw right there. So Lucas hits the first of two. A couple of substitutions in the game for Buford. If you have great guards, you're always going to be in contention because they just dictate so much. They have the ball in their hand. They set your tempo both offensively and defensively. Isaac Brown out of the game. Cousin Rico Brown back in. He's been kind of quiet. Lucas off the mark. Big rebound out of bounds off the Vikings. Lucas tried to uh, grab the loose ball, but it went off his foot. About three minutes to play here. Buford's got to keep coming down and getting good looks. And they got to bang the boards and stick back any chip back, stick backs. Theo Brown, right side. Rico Brown for three. Just off the mark. And the rebound by McLean. Here come the Vikings. On the run again. Here's Terrell. And he was fouled by Crawford. Again, if you're going to foul him, you cannot let him get his hands above his head. Here's the replay. And it's a reach. Again, that speed, speed kills any level. That was Zach Crawford's fifth personal foul. So he's gone. Good game for Zach Crawford, well, dog. You, he's had a super tournament. What a hard-nosed kid.
It's interesting. You had Zach Crawford, uh, who plays for the team. Craig Ca Crawford is also on the team. They're cousins. Both of their dads played at Buford. Their grandfather was the principal. It's a family at, affair at Buford. It's just, it's really interesting. And then uh, Trent ba Bagley. This is this is interesting too. Uh, Bagley, his uh, grandfather was the boys' basketball coach. He was also the principal. Hey, this is the hottest new program to air on PBS. is coming soon. 14 high school students capture their lives on video. Don't miss American High beginning April 4th right here on GPTV. We we're talking about the family affair. Of course, you got the Sams. They have two brothers, uh, Lauren and PK on the team. And then the Browns, three cousins. And by the way, the three cousins, all three Browns, their fathers were students here at Buford. There's your timeouts remaining in this one. Taylor County has them all remaining. That Buford helps. has used them all up already. They got one. They're gonna, Buford's going to have to start fouling here. Not yet, but soon. But you got you to give the Wolves a uh, tip of the cap. I mean, you know, winning four of their first 14. It didn't coming throw in the here, towel. No. Coming into the championship game, two games over 500, mm -hmm. and they're playing for the title. No one would have believed it. That's why you play the games, Jim. And this one's not over yet. Rick Terrell on the line for the Vikings. Now, Buford doesn't have to come down and shoot a whole bunch of threes right now. They can come down, bang it inside, look to score, try to get a steal, and then maybe foul down the road. If you shoot threes and miss, now you're forced to have to shoot the three. And Terrell hits one of two. Here come the Wolves. Looking to score and score quickly. Brown cross-court pass. And it looks as though Rico Brown stepped down the, the sideline. Oh, that hurts, Jim. That hurts. You got to at least get a shot at it. Hardman has it in the backcourt. Guarded tightly by both the Browns. Finally getting into the front court. And that's Terrell. Good job by Lauren Sam by holding the fort there. Here's Hardman with the drive. Stops and looks back. And the Vikings look to reset. This is Lucas. Believe. And Lucas is fouled on the baseline by Bagley. Two shot foul. They're over the limit. Takes the pressure off the first one, and the young man can relax. And then gets one to follow this one. And the first by Lucas is good. Chip Kirk into the game for Buford. Give him a little perimeter punch. Got another big one coming up next. The double-A championship. Calhoun and East Hall getting ready. Nice rebound by Badger. All right, here comes Buford again. Long three-point attempt by his Kirk was off the mark. Here's Bagley for three. He's off the mark. Here comes Hardman. Vikings on the run. Lucas. Titus Lucas. Long threes produce long rebounds and usually produce the transition baskets going the other way. Brown off the mark for three-point land. The Vikings on the run and a 16-point lead. Lucas feeds. Oh, what a play to McCrary. So this is what I alluded to earlier. If you come down right now and start shooting those threes, and if you miss, now you've got the long rebound. Brown shoots from the next county. It's a little too early to start doing that. Get it inside and score. Now you're cutting the lead. Look for the defensive stop, then foul. Because if you miss that three, now you're forced to foul. They come down, get two free throws, and now you keep falling behind the... even further. Boy, the Vikings are feeling it. Look at this. What a play. Well, he can elevate. He can elevate. He is what they call a reactor. He gets up and gets it. Edward McCrary knows how to finish off an alley-oop pass. It's a great, he is a finisher. He finishes. 
On the line, Antoine McLean. McLean's been a, uh, a key down the stretch, especially uh, down low. Defensively, because even if there is any breakdowns on the perimeter defensively for Taylor County, now you got to face him with those long arms, and he's much taller than he, than he appears because he's so long. Trent Bagley has just fouled out of the game. A great season by Bagley. He exemplifies everything good in high school basketball. He's a winner. Meantime, the Vikings just keep adding to the score. It's 56-37. Just like that, the lead's 19. Well, again, you took those quick threes, which produces those long rebounds, which produced quick scores on the other end for Taylor County. Look at the Vikings. They are fighting for the ball. They never stop coming at you. Great hustle by Rick Terrell, but he loses it on the travel. Theo Brown will do the inbound. Yeah, like for Coach Arnold, he's first class. He's bringing some kids in off the bench, let them experience playing in the state tournament. That's a first class move. Brown for three. Off the mark, rebound by the, by the other Brown, Isaac Brown. Look at this. Edward McCrary with the exclamation point. Wow. 58-37, Taylor County. Coach Hardman wants a timeout, and it's going to bring in a bunch of new kids. Here he comes. He'll have that opportunity. Uh, these guys are excellent, excellent coaches. That last dunk by McCrary was highlight video. Amazing. The Viking fans are on their feet. They're dancing in the stands here in Macon. What a play by McCrary. Boy, Buford just does not stop. They keep hustling. That's indicative of the coach. This is Charles Harmon trying to get it down court. The Wolves take over. Theo Brown loses it. Jimmy. Nice pass to the corner. Here's Brown for the three-pointer. No good. But Taylor County Brown really gets attacks it back. the ball, Jimmy. And Brown reloads. Nice Isaac Brown. Big shot by Isaac Brown. But I believe that's too little too late. Wolves take it back again. Count it down now. Ten seconds to go in the game. Shot off the mark. Here come the Vikings. Five seconds to go. The launch. Oh, what a launch that was. Off the mark for the Vikings. Win the single-A championship as they beat Buford 58-39. to You gotta love that. These kids are really excited. They deserve it. They worked hard, played hard, well-coached ball club. Excellent, excellent job. Both ends. Coach Arnold, Buford did a super job. The Wolves have nothing to be ashamed about. Excellent season. And the long wait is over. 1966 was a long time ago. Single-A state champions. Hey, but you got to hand it to the Wolves. As we mentioned earlier, they finished four. They started the year with only four wins in their first 14 games. They're two over 500. And yet they play for a state title, and they were so close. Let's go courtside to John Nelson. Hey, guys, here with Coach Hardman. First thing you said to me was, what can you say? What can you say about this? I tell you what, I feel so good now. It's just a shame. The guys did it. I owe it all to them. We stuck to the game plan. I tell you what, you know what? The zone, the last when we went to the zone, really made a difference. And we normally don't like to play zone. But that old raggedy 2 3 showed up today, baby. Let Let's me start. ask you, eight seniors, what does it mean to them? Let's take it a step at a time. Because we were, this group has been together since really since it was in the eighth grade, and that means a lot to them. Because we have we paid the price, we worked hard all summer, and then they stuck together, and didn't let anything come between them, and we pulled it out. And you were a little worried. I want to say in between third and yeah. fourth quarter, you wanted them to play to win instead of not to lose, right? That's right. You know, I think you heard me say that. Because that's a difference. You got to play to win. Because when you start playing to lose, you tighten up for some reason, and they went out and did that. 
It's, it's going to be a big traffic jam down US 80 heading home. Angie Hartman, congratulations. First state champ of the weekend. Back to you, G. All right, Johnny. We'll take a break. First game of, is in the books. Taylor County beats Buford 58-39. We'll be back. Funding for broadcast of the GHSA Boys and Girls Basketball Championships is provided in part by the following. 